Stan always said that the Marvel Universe is the world outside your window. And that the people could find characters they could see themselves in. Nobody else had ever done this before. Fearless storytellers. I killed Spider-Man. What? That's insane. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sarah and Paul. Uh, it's so good to see you, too. Uh, Marvel 616 marks 80 years of uh, Marvel Comics. What does the docuseries aim to highlight? So when we started working on this series, we really wanted to showcase kind of the breadth of, of what Marvel has created, right? People know our comics, they know our characters, they know the variety of ways that we have told stories, but they don't necessarily know the stories behind those creations. And it was an opportunity not just to showcase our creators and our own internal legacy, but also uh, take a look at kind of how the world has influenced us and we've influenced the world. Uh, and we were so excited to get to do it on such a, a wide variety of topics with so many incredible filmmakers like Paul, who each brought their own passion for Marvel uh, and their own passion for storytelling in, in their own unique way that I think really reflects in the fact that from each episode to the next, you never quite know what you're gonna get when you start, but by the end, you really do feel like you understand a little bit more of the heart of what makes Marvel, Marvel. Well, Paul, you've written Marvel comics yourself and your yes. episode, Lost and Found, uh, tracks the obscure uh, characters uh, that are favorites of Marvel comic writers. Uh, you know, can you tell me some more about these characters and what you learned uh, during this episode? Oh, absolutely. I, I think that, you know, Marvel has all these giant characters that we all are familiar with, you know, whether they are the front facing characters like Spider Man and Iron Man and Black Panther. But I am kind of fascinated by the characters that maybe haven't gotten a light shined on them. And as a comic book fan and as a comic book writer, I know that this is the secret language that everyone kind of communicates with. You know, when you are talking to another Marvel fan, you're like, do you remember that book? It was like a guy who was kind of like Doctor Strange, but he was like kind of like a bargain base. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what about that guy who was like, had mongoose blood and he, oh, the wizard, yeah. And so it was that kind of conversation that I wanted to, embrace uh, because, you know, Marvel, you could get in at any point. And not only can you get in at any point, but you can get in with any character. And as a kid, I think that you're finding a comic book or someone gives you a comic book. You don't have that autonomy of like, I'm reading this, you know, you go and you find that voice. But a lot of the times these obscure characters were people's entry points, were the ones that they remember, the ones that made an indent on them as a, as a kid. So you know, um, whether or not your entry point was Spider-Man or a cow that was bitten by a vampire called Hell Cow, I wanted to support all of that. And what I found in the series was there is so much passion and love from current creators of these, these characters that it made me think we could bring back these characters. We could update them exactly the same way that Reggie Hudlin did with Black Panther, which was take this property and bring it to this height that is now, you know, one of the biggest characters in the MCU or the Marvel Universe. Well, hearing Paul's talk, Sarah, I feel uh, someone like me who is not your typical Marvel fan uh, could actually be activated. So does this uh, series aim to do that uh, to kind of wake up latent uh, possible Marvel fans? For sure. I think one of the beauties of working with our production company on this supper club and our partners was that they brought a really deep understanding and a passion and a, a kind of track record of documentary filmmaking, right? And so they approached these, not just as stories we were going to tell about Marvel, but films we were going to tell about the human experience, about visual storytelling, about connections between people, done through the lens of Marvel. And I think because of that approach, we were really able to actually unlock a deeper level of story that will appeal to people who might not necessarily think of themselves as Marvel fans. Because yes, each story has an element of Marvel to it, 
but each story also is about uh, a variety of things, whether it be personal journeys or discovery of kind of quirky subjects or looking at the, the kind of concept of how to become a visual storyteller. You don't necessarily need to love Marvel in order to appreciate the type of narrative that we're telling with these documentaries. But I'm sure it helps uh, to be a Marvel fan if you are one of the filmmakers of uh, one of these stories in these anthologies. And, uh, you know, Paul, you are a huge Marvel fan. So what do you think uh, that kind uh, of expertise and knowledge uh, helps you with the series? You know, to me, I think that it's part of my DNA, being a Marvel fan. And I, and I think that what I always love about Marvel is, yes, it's these amazing superheroes, but truly it's these amazing people. What's behind the mask, who we all are and who we all strive to be and the, the people that we want to be, right? And so there is a passion that I have when I'm talking about my favorite uh, books. And I may not know every character or every storyline, but it's that excitement of finding out oh, I didn't even know this existed. And, and to what Sarah was just saying, the idea that, you know, comic books sometimes, I think people, there's a barrier to entry. Like, well, how do I get in? What should I start with? What, what's mine? And I think what this series does so well is it makes it accessible to the casual fan because you see the passion, the eyes light up when people are talking about these characters. And you're like, oh, I, I got to read this. Why, why haven't I read it? You know, and it, it's sort of, um, we're letting you into this club. And so my, my Marvel knowledge allowed me to do the first step, which was reach out with the language that I had of these forgotten characters. And then I really let the people I interviewed guide me to the next level. And I think that that's the sign of, I think, great collaboration, but also how you find, for me, the best things, whether it's podcasts or books or movies, I find it through conversation and people that I respect. So, uh, you know, the passion was the first step and the rest, uh, I let it, I let it go. Well, your excitement has definitely ignited my curiosity, Paula, yes, I have to tell you that. And Sarah, for fans in India, you know, there are huge Marvel fans uh, across the country and so many of them as well. Uh, will you be exploring an Indian connect in the coming uh, days, years? Well, so right now we're very focused on just getting the word out about season one and hoping that people tune in and enjoy and kind of discover these stories. We definitely think there's so many more stories to be told across the globe in terms of Marvel fans and their connection to the brand. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to find a variety of ways uh, within kind of Marvel and our nonfiction work to connect with the audiences in India, uh, but really around the globe. All right, I'm looking forward to catching the docu series. Thank you so much for talking with me. Oh, your pleasure. Thank you so Thanks much. for having us. Thank you.